Up to now, there are already many great Chinese EVs on the market, from small hatchbacks to big saloons, from MPVs to off-roaders. Yes, indeed, Chinese EVs have come a long way, especially in market share, smart technology, and industry chain. But you know what? It has not always been a smooth sail. It was actually quite bumpy. And here's one of the bumps. This is a Qiantu K50, an all-electric Chinese supercar you've probably never heard of. Wait, maybe you have because it was revived recently in America as the Mulan GT. In 2018, it received all the attention for being the first road legal supercar in China. No, the EP9 is not. However, time has proven this car to be a failure. So today, let's find out what exactly went wrong with this rather radical EV. I'm Harris, you're watching Matt EV. With a shape similar to the BMW i8, lots of carbon fiber panels, and many snazzy original designs, it certainly looks like a proper supercar. And it's not all show and no go. Being a sub brand of CH Auto, an automotive design engineering company in China, the engineers of Qiantu clearly know what they were doing. Underneath this carbon fiber, we can spot aluminum alloy chassis that enhance body rigidity. The front and rear double wishbone suspension that guarantee to press all wheels firmly against the road and the tuning from Horiba Mira taking the handling and driving pleasure to another level. In fact, to achieve a weight distribution similar to mid-engine supercars, they even adopted the layout of traditional combustion engine ones, placing the battery where the engine and gearbox would normally sit. But as it turns out, even if you knew all these, it's just not enough to make a great electric supercar. Despite the flashy look and solid foundation, the K50 falls short surprisingly in power. It only has 435 horsepower, 680 Nm of torque, not to 100 acceleration of 4.6 seconds, and a top speed of 200 kph. These seem decent, but they are not quite on the same level with anything that you would call a supercar. Sure, it's a 6-year-old car, but let's look at the new ES8 that came out the same year. It has 653 horsepower, 840 Nm of torque, and can do not 100 in just 4 seconds. And it's a 3-row big SUV. Moreover, the K50 fails to fully utilize its power. In standard mode, the throttle response even feels lagging and sluggish, almost like driving a car with a small turbocharged engine, which is quite rare for an EV. Although you can switch to sport mode to address this issue, but there are still limitations where you want to unleash more power. The boost mode, which gets you that 4.6 second acceleration, has a very strict enabling requirement. It can't be too cold, it can't be too hot, the battery has to be healthy enough, and must have more than 80% battery remaining. So despite having 435 horsepower, there's always a portion of it that's nearly impossible to reach, like books sitting on the top shelf. It's clear that there's a mismatch between the performance and its supercar identity. And it doesn't end here. Having said this much, I haven't mentioned the price yet. It was about 750,000 RMB. In 2018, that money couldn't even buy you a 350 horsepower Porsche Cayman S in China. So perhaps we can understand why they only gave the K50 this much power. But when you get inside, you will realize where the catch is. While you can still spot many supercar features like the thick steering wheel, plenty of Alcantara, and a super tight cabin, you just can't relate this interior to the word supercar. Cheap buttons, loose assembly, and an outdated infotainment system like an old smartphone. It even reminds me of the Viet Meister we had in the garage, which cost about 200,000 RMB and also debuted in 2018. Guess what? The Viet Master also went broke. Aside from the terrible interior quality, the chassis also has some issues. Over the last 5 years, this car has done over 12,000 kilometers. While that might not be short for a supercar, it seems to have left irreversible marks on this car. The steering feedback and response feel vague in the dead zone. The chassis shows signs of rubber aging when going over speed bumps. And there's an unsettling noise from the steering system when making sharp turns. 
Almost like the limited slip differential was engaged. The last supercar, you know, sports car, that left such an impression on me was an old Lotus. But it's a shame that this K50 doesn't have the heritage. If you have 750,000 RMB in 2018, apart from this K50 and Cayman S, you could also buy a brand new Lotus x made in 2015. But why would a car with a few imports still be in the inventory for three years? It's simple. The car position like this just doesn't sell in China. In China, people who buy supercars and those who drop 750,000 RMB on a ride are usually the same crowd. The former love to show off, be that looks, sound, or brand. They probably wouldn't or can't push their cars to the limit, but they would still want the cars to have that potential. The latter, on the other hand, wants something beyond an average car, or something enjoyable for daily driving. So no matter what kind of people, this kind of supercar is not what they really want. Because those who really get the essence of driving are kind of rare in China. And this applies even more to electric ones. For an EV this expensive, it needs to offer something new in terms of technology, like smart cabins or autonomous driving. Because those who are willing to spend this kind of money on an EV aren't just doing it for the low cost of driving. They are doing it because they found gas cars boring and need something exciting to fulfill their expectation for a car. So the looks and performance isn't enough to attract them. At least, this K50 couldn't. In fact, for EV buyers with such a budget, the supercar identity could even do more harm than good. After K50 flopped, tend to struggle to recover. Although they announced plans for their second car, the K20, in 2022, and even opened a flagship store in downtown Shanghai, it all fizzled out. Ironically, Tian Tu means the road ahead in Chinese. But honestly, I'm not here to mock it. They did many things wrong for sure, but they also achieved something. They showed that performance EV has the potential, and handling is still crucial in EVs. In a way, this car helped future car makers in China by stepping into pitfalls and heading down wrong directions. And there have been many trailblazers like these along the way.